What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I am 1 million percent addicted to Slay the Spire. Yeah, I'm a little late to the party. Came out in November of 2017. A friend of a friend told me about this game back then, like at least three years ago, four years ago. I was like, dude, you gotta play Slay the Spire. It's really freaking good. And I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll check it out someday. And I looked it up. I was like, oh, it's a card game. I don't know if I'm really into card games, you know, card-based combat, Dungeons and Dragons style. I don't know, you know, whatever. And I sent an email to the developer. I was like, oh, hey, if you guys got a spare code, you know, I'll check it out and cover your game. And I don't remember if they responded or not. It was a while back, but I never got the code. And I was like, eh, whatever. I'll get to it someday in the future then. Then I saw it on Xbox Game Pass. And I'm like, you know what? I'll hit it. The gateway drug. Xbox Game Pass. Let's do this. So I started playing Slay the Spire on Xbox Game Pass, testing it out on my new Steam Deck. Yes, you can do Game Pass on Steam Deck. And it's as incredible as I would hoped it would be. It does the uh, air streaming, so you don't even have to download the games. It just plays them via the internet and it works overall for the most part really well so yeah google stadia unnecessary game pass is where it's at and i was like you know what this is fun i really like this game i'm hooked on it i'm completely addicted and i can't take my steam deck everywhere with me but you know what i do have with me is my phone i always have my phone with me i don't really play games on my phone but you know what this game it feels like it would work on a mobile device, on a phone. Let me look it up. And sure enough, it was in the uh, Apple App Store. Uh, I think it's on Google Play as well. And it was something like 10 bucks USD. I was like, sure, you know what? I'll take the dive. It had four out of five stars. People were complaining about the screen being too small and unable to, you know, touch the right stuff that you meant to or accidental swiping and stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, if that's the biggest issue, who knows what device they were playing on. I got the now the <laughs> iPhone 14 Plus Pro Max or whatever they call it. And I was like, it's a huge screen. It's basically like a mini iPad at this point. So I'll give it a shot. And sure enough, it works great. In fact, I'd argue it works too great. It's so great that I'm like every waking hour of every free second that I have, I'm like, okay, I can, I can squeeze in some more Slay the Spire right now. So anyways, <laughs> I'm not even talking about the game, just talking about how addicted to it I am. So it's basically a card building deck game where you go through, you defeat enemies, you unlock relics that give you superpowers, and you unlock new cards. And those cards are used to, you know, take down the monsters. Pretty straightforward. But the twist comes in with every game you play is different. There are four different characters you can select from, well, at least three that you unlock, four in total, that have a completely different loadout. All the cards are completely different for each character, so whichever one you select, completely different game every single time you play it. And while you're going through it, it's a different game because you get different cards and different paths and different things happen every single time. In a weird way, it kind of reminds me of that indie game Rogue Legacy where every room you go into was randomized and every time you played it, the layout was completely different. So it felt like a new game every single time you played it. And Rogue Legacy for a long time was my favorite indie game ever. And then we had games like uh, Hollow Knight come out and now I'm playing Slay the Spire and I'm like, man, these indie games are just so freaking good. Like it's the kind of feeling I had when I was playing Rogue Legacy where after I finally beat the game, I was completely hooked on that, but after I finally beat that game, I was left with the feeling of dread. Just like, man, games don't get better than this. That That is like peak gaming. And I was just kind of like let down. I don't wanna say depressed, but I was just like, where do I go from here? And I was like, didn't know what to do or play for like weeks. So I guess what I'm saying is if you're in the mindset of I'm looking for a game to play after you get through with a really good game, 
and you feel like, where do I turn? What do I do? What do I play now? I can promise you this one, you, you can do far worse than Slay the Spire. I, I don't know if this is even a review. It's more of just a, if you haven't played it and you like games, <laughs> play it. You won't regret it. And you, you will wonder why it took you so long to give it a shot. And for those of you who have Xbox Game Pass, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. Just It's free. Download it. Play it. And tell me what you think about it. I mean, I feel like I completely missed the bus on this game. It's been out for five years, almost five-year anniversary now. And I'm just now getting to it. So, took me long enough. Better late than never. But at this point, it has got to be... And I'm not just saying this in the moment. Like, I'm just looking at it as a whole experience. It has got to be easily on my top five indie games of all time. I mean, it might even be up there on, on favorite games of all time, most addicting games of all time. There are some drawbacks to it. Like, you can play it for a really long time and get a really good deck, and then it shuffles your deck when you get to the end boss and one of your turns. You don't get any of the cards you need, and you die. And you have to start all the way back at the beginning by no fault of your own. So it's, it's got stuff like that where it's just like, mm, that's really annoying and frustrating. But it does have that just one more try, one more time. I'll build the deck and I won't get that load out next time. And I'll definitely take them down mentality kind of game. And that's what keeps drawing me back to it is I want to defeat this game. I want to beat it. I want to play as all the characters and get to the end with all of them. And so far I've beaten it with two out of the four main characters. I'm not sure what happens at, after you beat it, but every time you do beat it with one of the characters, it does show at the end screen, like one of their colors lights up. So I'm sure if you beat it with all four of them that you'll have like a major ending to the game or, or something gets unlocked. I don't know. I'm interested to see. But that is Slay the Spire. Uh, I'm gonna do the end of this video now. I'm gonna finish my, my jog slash walk with Dexter. What is it, boy? What do you see? What is it? And then I'm gonna get back to playing some more Slay the Spire. I'm gonna leave it there, but let me know what you guys think. If you've played this game, your thoughts on it, and if you haven't played it, check it out. And let me know if it's as good to you as it is to me. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Smash to change, smash to change, smash to change, smash to change.